Now I've got a really interesting pattern for you today, and it's one I'll bet not a lot of you have heard of. Now I found it in the Mayfly Nymphs section of the Federation of Fly Fishers Pattern Encyclopedia, but to me this thing doesn't really look like a mayfly nymph. It looks more like a general all-purpose nymph, almost a fuzzy nymph that you'd see in one of Polly Roseboro's books. And you know the type I'm talking about. It's one of these patterns that doesn't really look exactly like anything, but it looks enough like uh, several patterns and really just looks alive that you know the thing's going to work. Now, there's no history to this pattern. In the book, it was tied by master fly tire Ted Patlin, and we've talked about him on the channel before, but it didn't say whether or not he created the fly. But either way, it's a really unique pattern. And one of the more unique traits of this pattern is it's got a long tail. It's got an aftershaft feather for the tail. The aftershaft feather is it's one of the, the small feathers at the base of a pheasant rump feather. And they're pretty delicate, so you'll want to be careful when tying it in. They're really fine, though. They do remind you a little bit of marabou, maybe some CDC, so you know the thing's going to look alive in the water. Now, my recommendation, if you want to tie this thing, really, just go crazy with it. There's nothing that says you have to stick with the colors in this book. Maybe make the body olive or brown or black. Heck, you could even make it a hot spot, tie it in purple or pink. Or just put a bead on it. You know, why not? If I fish this thing, it's not going to be as a mayfly imitation. It's going to be an all-purpose attractor nymph. But it is a pretty cool looking pattern. I think y'all are going to like it. Let's give it a shot. So there's one in the vise. A Lady Amherst mayfly nymph. Pretty unique looking pattern. And the recipe calls for this Tiemco 2488. Let's go ahead and pinch this barb. Which is a curve shank hook. It's it looks like a one X short. It doesn't say it is. It's definitely a one X strong though. And let's put some white thread down. We're not going to take it all the way back. This pattern really looks like it's only tied on the front half of the fly. So let's go to about right there. Now you'll want to grab a pheasant after shaft feather sometimes called a gimp feather. I think this is kind of the, the signature of this guy right here. So let's catch this on really up here about the front half of the fly. I don't imagine it really matters what the orientation is. So we've got it caught in kind of flat. Last one I did, it was kind of upright, but I don't think it really makes a big difference. Next thing we're going to catch in is some cream dubbing. I'm just going to use some rabbit. And I'm going to put a pretty fat noodle on here. It's not a real long body, but it is kind of bulbous. It is a little bit thick. So let's see what that does for us right there. Okay, I think that's going to work. Next thing we're going to catch in calls for mottled hen soft hackle. This isn't a mottled, but it's a speckled. It's the closest thing I had. I think it'll work just fine. And we're only going to put two wraps. Create a little catch in point right there. Catch this in with a couple of wraps. And it's a pretty thin stem of that feather, so I'm going to fold it back over, do a couple extra turns. I will have to snip off that front piece but it will make sure that, you know, I don't break it or let it slip out on me. So I'm going to take my hackle pliers because I don't have a lot to be working with here. Maybe an inch and a half of a feather and put two wraps on it. See what that does for us. Okay, I think that is going to be plenty. Let's take our thread back a turn or two and catch this off. Okay, if that's swept back to your liking, go ahead and put a few extra wraps. If not, now would be the time to go ahead and, and get it swept back. Now this is part of what I think makes this fly kind of unique. It does call for a wing and it just says mottled turkey feather, um, turkey tail feather. So that's exactly what this is. And I couldn't necessarily tell how they had it tied in. So I'm just gonna take it, spin it in my fingers, kind of break these up a little bit and then just catch it in right there on top. It's kind of what it looked like in the book. 
but at the same time, I don't know what that really adds to it. Maybe just a little bit darker spot, but I'm thinking you could probably skip this turkey wing and it, the fly would be really just as effective. I think what is going to sell this fly to the fish is that big fluffy tail that's going to have all kinds of action in the water. So let's go ahead and do a whip finish to see if we have any cleanup. So do we have anything on this one we want to clean up? No, I don't think so. Um, maybe I could pluck a little bit of those soft hackle fibers out. I might have more than I'd like, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to put a drop of head cement on it and call this guy done. So there you go, Lady Amherst Mayfly Nymph. I think it's kind of neat, but certainly a unique pattern. So that's it, my friends. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care, and we'll see you next time.